Aloha friends, Jack Dugan here with Maui Now and Pacific Media Group. And today I'm uh, sitting here with renowned artist Steve Tobin at the beautiful Imua Discovery Garden. And uh, we're, in a, we're in a time obviously of, of healing and very early stages of healing here on Maui ever since the tragedies on August 8th. But we're here today and I'm here with Steve because there's something very positive going on here at the Imua Discovery Garden. And it's, uh, it's about art and it's about um, serving our community, serving our keiki, and um, Steve has done some amazing work um, that's very positive and impressive. Um, Steve, you, um, you did the, uh, the Trinity route at uh, the 9-11 Memorial in New York City. And uh, you know, I sit here with you and, and see these magnificent structures, some upwards of 20 feet tall, it seems, or so. All this equipment, all the work that goes into it. Why Maui? What, what, what started that and, and how did it all happen? First of all, uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here at this time. Uh, Dean Wong and I planned the exhibition uh, about four to five months before the fires. And um, he wanted to reopen Imua Family Services with uh, a very uplifting exhibition. The exhibition's called from Steve Tobin, From Earth to Sky. And um, when the fires happened, uh, I offered to postpone the show and Dean said no, now we need it more than ever. Uh, this exhibition uh, gives us a chance to reframe the dialogue about Maui around the world. Uh, I was two months ago in Shanghai and they were asking me, they knew I was showing here, how are things doing, how's the healing. Um, the whole world knows about what happened here and uh, it seems Maui has a special place in everybody's hearts around the world. So this is an opportunity to show that Maui's back. This is the largest exhibition in the history of the state of Hawaii, wow. and it's on Maui. So very ambitious and uplifting. Earth to sky, what does that mean? When you visualize uh, Maui, you, the unseen power underground that is creating this rock in, in the middle of the ocean uh, and lifting up to the sky, which also implies look at the earth and the sky. Your commitment to sustainability, what's maybe a one or two good examples of, of how you would describe your commitment to sustainability and, and why it's so important in your art? Well, it's particularly important in my art because my art uh, reveres nature. It's really meant to show the power and beauty of nature, and we are nature. So it would really be um, a conflict if I were stepping on nature and abusing it in the creation of trying to memorialize it. So in our studio, we have 500 solar panels for the last 15 years. So we're overproducing uh, electricity. And the, the pipes and the big steel pieces up to 30 feet high here are recycled uh, oil pipe actually. So taking some maybe uh, bad karma, bad mojo and turning it into something positive. Imua obviously serves the community primarily in a lot of ways um, directly through the children, through Akeki. And uh, the children that are going to come here and, and actually be able to um, engage with, with the art. Showing in a garden uh, is different than showing in an art museum. This is a very uh, user-friendly art. You can touch on it. Um, within reason, you can climb on it. I try to look through the eyes of a 10-year-old when I'm creating my works. Is there a window to entrance uh, for, for everybody? Different cultures, different ages, different time periods. Any child can look at every piece I have here and have a story, project a story. Makes sense, sounds fun. It's cool that they can actually touch and feel and and engage with it in that way. And I think for some kids, it may be their first real interaction with art, and hopefully we get them off, you know, on a, a good footing mm -hmm. for art. I don't know if this is a fair question to ask, but is there a piece that's your favorite or your most drawn to personally? Here Usually at I'll answer that with uh, my next piece because these pieces are souvenirs of ideas. Once I get them out, I'm on to the next piece. But, um, in particular, there's one piece here that I'm in love with, mm -hmm. and it's called the Twisties. Mm. Uh, it's an installation of 30 sculptures from eight to 17 feet high, 30 of them. And it's about 100 feet long, and you can twist and spin them. Uh, people come and start dancing in them. We had uh, some hula performers in there 
dancing and singing with them. So I think that they stimulate the most interaction and joy. It's just mm -hmm. a happy, happy piece. So mm -hmm. I guess that would be my favorite. Is it your first time to Maui? This is my first time to Maui for this wow. exhibition. Okay, so how has Maui impacted you being here, especially during a time like this, the heaviness, the spirit of Maui and the people right now, along with your exhibit? How has this impacted you personally? The big impact on me is the people. Uh, I've been invited into this community like uh, a member of their family. And that's not normal around the world. I think that the people are so welcoming, appreciative of the philosophy of what I do and the, the timing of this. And I just feel so fortunate to have made friends that I feel I could call upon any time and they could call upon me. And in just a week, I feel like uh, in some ways this is my home. That's pretty powerful. Thank you for sharing, Steve. Again, we're here at the Imua Discovery Garden with renowned artist Steve Tobin showcasing his work here. It's going to be up for uh, throughout the year. So you can, you can come down and visit and um, we'll have a link to the website. And uh, thank you for watching. I want to give a, a big shout out, uh, mahalo to uh, Emua family that has uh, put this together and to all the people of Maui who have embraced me and this, um, this fantastic effort to bring art to uh, the people of Maui. Mahalo. Thanks, Steve.